Greetings, aloha, mahalo, whatever your language is, aloha, konnichiwa, um, bunaziwa if you're from Eastern Europe, and kumantalibu, um, uh, como esta, hola. I'm here in Asia, and this is Thailand. We're in the south right now, and I'm going to the Philippines tomorrow, so I just want to give you a little information. Um, imagine for yourself, I'm at a, a boat dock here, and just imagine for yourself that you're looking above at the Philippines. Better yet, go to Google Earth and actually zoom in on it. Now the bigger islands make it look like there's not as many, but actually there's over 6,000 islands. When you fly over, and as I fly over, tears have come to my eyes as I looked down and I saw the number of islands with the people that don't have much access to the outer world or that don't have um, missionaries and people coming in, per se. Um, when you look down at these islands, sure, there's people up at the tops, and you know, there's the mountain people, there's the natives, and, and there's trails going up there, and, and we work with those people too, but the majority of the people are right at the water's edge, right around the edge of the water, right around the edge of the island, and you see all these little villages there, and it's just... This is where it gets very emotional for me because it's been almost 20 years I've been struggling in the Philippines. Now, I talked to Jeff Rich. He's, he's a guy that, that I know and I see at ASI sometimes and we keep in touch a little bit, but he, uh, he runs an organization called Layman's Ministry. I talked to him about this because there was a guy by the name of Mel Hemp who wanted to donate a vessel. I've been on his vessel and I've talked with uh, Jamie Spence and others with the canvas back. and. You know, I I understand where they're coming from because I was there once. I had a very large asset, not a boat, but a very large asset, and I literally was an emotional wreck trying to find people who would actually run the ministry. I had the asset, but I needed people that were passionate and on God's side and that were doing it according to Scripture and the right way. And it was very difficult and finally our family we we donated the organization away but now i'm on the other end where i i'm passionate about something there's a need i struggle i've asked people to to share the burden boat people and i know that god has a a reason for this delay in this long period of time but um, I finally got to the point where I started this ministry, our uh, Philippine Mission Boat and Land Project, because you have to have a piece of land somewhere to pull the boat out of the water if there's a storm or even tie it, and it just makes sense to have a piece of land and the, the mooring and the boat. I started building a boat. Now, not a huge boat that would go intercontinent or any in, to in the different countries, but just inner island and something small. And I'm not a boat builder, but I prayed about it daily. I didn't look at any books or any anything to do with boats. I just used, um, I just prayed. I just used basic knowledge that I had in my head. Then I was in Hawaii, and some really difficult things happened on the way over. As you know, my passport was taken away in China. I went through some difficulties. I had to get that back. I had to clear a bunch of debts, and I didn't see my wife for two years. During that time, someone reached out to us to donate a very large, very nice, according to them, yacht, vessel, 50 foot basically, schooner in Hawaii, in Kona. I mean, how good can it get? So, of course, um, believing that it was an Amer a miracle, I dropped everything that I was doing and went there. And what funds I had for the mission work that I had saved up myself, uh, a few thousand dollars, I, I took that and I had that with me. Two things happened in January of this year that were devastating to us. One was the mission boat that was donated sunk. The Bobolink sunk. Go to bobolink.life and you can see that. Um, we almost lost our life. My son, my cousin, and I were on board. Turns out it was a scam and you can learn about that. Um, it wasn't a good boat. It was basically a boat that the owner needed to get rid of because he was under the gun to get rid of it and get it out of the harbor and he had been paid a good sum of money to actually purchase the mooring that he was using for the boat that he had waited 15 years for. So he was he was in a very big jam. The, the state of Hawaii knows about these scams. They happen often in the state of Hawaii. And I've decided 
uh, not to go after the state of Hawaii on this because, you know, they're a big organization, of course, they're a government, and uh, it's not that I don't think that God could help me win it, but there were some state people that helped me, and I really appreciate the, the Coast Guard that helped me, but, you know, the person that really is at fault is the, the person who owned the vessel, who was involved, and it's, it's really easy for him to get out side of the responsibility of this whole thing by just saying simply, I donated it. It makes him look like the good guy, but if you donate something that's going to kill someone that's not safe, and so I'm going to go into that later on other videos, but I want to give you an update that basically we needed a boat desperately, and uh, it seemed like a big miracle happened. A boat that was worth hundred and supposedly $27,000, it was appraised of that, uh, was gifted we spent all of the mission fund money into the boat to get it going and ready, but then we were pushed and forced out of the harbor before it was ready, and then we were denied access to the only haul out in the area where we could pull it out and make it really seaworthy, and then it started to sink. Um, it's interesting because we don't know exactly where the water came in, but at the last, it seemed like, according to my son, that it was coming in through the, the head, the bathroom area, and that's the area that the owner had said, don't touch that area. Well, we didn't touch it. We didn't touch it, and it's still not touched. It's down 1,400 feet under, under the ocean. Now I'm back in Thailand, headed to the Philippines to continue working on this little boat that I started, but there's something really amazing that just happened. Captain Dan, while I was on the Big Island, you know, um, a friend of mine sent over money to buy land, and we bought, um, I found a piece of land, which he hasn't even seen yet, three acres, and uh, that's paid for, and the, the land is, is a beautiful little farmland. I'm talking to him about using it, uh, a portion of it for, I planted hundreds of uh, exotic fruit trees on that, and I, and I wanna use a portion of it for people, I don't wanna say like myself, but people who are passionate about ministry, someone who is out there doing things around the world, making a difference, needs a little vacation, a little uh, retreat, you know, if you want to call it that, to get um, recharged. And so um, I'm working on that. I've built the model house, but I met Captain Dan while I was on the Big Island, and he came to California, and we spent some time there. He worked on uh, a little vessel that we have there that we're trying to sell for like a couple thousand dollars to help generate some funds over here. But uh, he has a couple boats, actually four boats, but there's two boats that he is willing uh, along with his partner, we're working on a, a project. He owes a partner a little bit of money, but still there is a, a willingness shown on her side and an absolute 100% willingness on his side to, to donate his entire portion to uh, the, the Philippine project. So, you know, we want to thank Dan and I want to call him up on this video. Maybe I'll connect it to this and just verify that with him. And we'd like to, um, his partner wants about $15,000, but that's not necessarily before the boats can be used in the mission field. Um, we have reason to believe that she would uh, approve the trip if we had people willing to crew it. We need, we need, you know, we need people. We need two. We have two vessels there, and they're nice. One's a 31 cruiser, the other's uh, 37, I believe. So I've been on both of them. They're very nice, seaworthy fiberglass vessels. And we're trying to find people who would help us get those to the Philippines. Going through the Marshall Islands to meet up with Craig Scott, my chairman, who's waiting there for us in the Marshall Islands. It's really not that hard of a sail. If you go down south, you can basically go to the Marshall Islands any time of year. But then once you get down to there, there's light trades and you can make it all the way over to the Philippines. And uh, if there's any one of you that wants to uh, get involved with this or that knows about vessels, please get on board, talk to me, and uh, look at my number right below on the screen. Okay? God bless. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.